Lisa BKC. <laughs> Everybody freaking out. Today we're gonna be talking about the Merle Jean on the Fabrida series. The do's and don'ts. And yeah, our boy Ivor coming along well. Big KC, let's jump straight into this. Boom, boom, boom. What's up guys, you know it's your boy Che Real with another For Breeder series. Today we're gonna be talking about the Merle Jean. I uh, just wanted to say guys make sure you like and subscribe. This is part two of our color genetics for breeder series. Um, we did touch on a few things before guys just want to run through that really quickly what is a locus uh, we talk about that being a location where the alleles are found the alleles being the genetic makeup of the dog you know in a specific location an allele will be distributed one part by each parent these comprise of both dominant and recessive genes dog would be 50% mom 50% dad so let's jump straight into this First things first guys, a mole coat is considered a pattern, not a color. Um, the mole gene would be a dominant gene, which means it only requires one allele or one copy to show physically on the dog's coat. When we talk about color genetics, the mole coat is represented by capital M, small m if the mole gene does not exist or is not present. A typical mole dog will comprise of capital M, smaller case M, you know, which would be considered a regular mole dog. Now, as you may already know, when a mole dog is bred to a mole dog, this creates a double mole, and there are a lot of negative effects that could come down uh, to having a double mole breeding, which we will touch on in a moment. If two non mole dogs are bred, then we have lowercase m, lowercase m, which means that the genetic is non existent in these dogs. So we would not result in a mole dog. Keep in mind guys, mole to mole breeding should not be practiced and also is considered a form of dog cruelty. In this punnet square, we're going to show you exactly how a double mole is formed. And we're also gonna go through some of the problems that you may experience with a mole to mole breeding. As you can see with a mole to mole breeding, 50% of your litter will you get a proper mole. When you have a mole to mole breeding with both dogs carrying one copy of the mole gene, 25% of your litter is likely to become double mole. This is where you'll find a lot of faults, as you can see in the following pictures. This would affect the pigmentation, also would cause deafness and blindness in the dogs. So guys, please don't practice. A lot of guys wonder what double moles would look like. These are just a few pictures so you know what you don't want to see in your kennels. Of course, I would advise you guys to do more research. This is just a quick video. Guys, make sure you like and subscribe. You know, I hope you love the content we're giving you so far. Here you would see here if we did a regular breeding with a mole, uh, with one copy of the mole gene, um, going back to a female, who does not have a copy of the mole gene here we would still have a 50% mole litter 50% non mole litter in general circumstances of course more or less that could be different you know depending on what you know genetics the dogs would push over in their litters this is a dominant gene so you only require one copy to get to your goal of producing a mole litter so this has been the end of our for breeder series guys i hope you enjoy this you know right now i'm just going to show you guys a few clips this is a mole litter right here this actually is a litter that ivor came off of you can see your boy he's right there you know killing the nipple closer to the top <laughs> and um yeah as you can see guys you know you don't need to try to perform a double mole um you know breeding um, they come out perfectly healthy this way and as you can see with the dominant gene the dominant mole gene like this litter is predominantly uh, mole so I know some of you guys just out there for the paper some of you guys just out there trying to create colorful dogs but at the end of the day, the day guys make sure you get the health stuff out of the way make sure you get the structure out of the way nice healthy dogs you know before you try going and look for color guys and as you can see perfectly healthy dogs right here you know so um yeah this is a quick clip guys uh in case you guys wondering about the update on my boy ivor 
you know um Ivor caught tick fever at a very early age so you realize that we started posting him and then after a while we stopped because he was struggling with it and you know the vets down here you know they couldn't figure it out so i'll be doing a video you know to show you guys exactly what we went through so you guys know but right now your boy is doing perfect he's healthy you know he came from like basically his dying bed you know and now you know basically doing everything that he used to you know trying to come back 100 you know probably might never get there but you know he's going you know at the end of the day guys you know um i was just thankful that it's not a genetic thing and we were able to figure it out and it was tick fever almost took his life but we were able to uh, take care of that and uh, hopefully we'll be producing a mill litter for you guys soon i know you guys are looking out for that uh so yeah you know bkc we have it coming but you know these are what you'll be looking forward to you know when your boy come out your boy will come out and deliver for you <laughs> guys so just remember the double mill litters you know or trying to create that double mill you know mill to mill breeding um first off the registries don't take on the uh the mills you know when it comes to you know standard uh registers like ukc uh abkc um so that's one thing and the reason for that is because these guys are trying to avoid the animal cruelty out there you know because a lot of people are inexperienced breeders you know and they know that uh but the great thing about the bully community is that um one thing that's good about it is that more people were able to learn about the mole and the mole genetics you know to learn not to breed mole to mole a lot of what we've done here today you guys are already familiar with this is your boy camo this is Ivor's brother same litter you know so this is kind of like you know what you should expect you know from the letters that we have coming so i just wanted to show you guys that you know i've of course not in the best condition you know compared to this guy uh, but of course the blood is there you know nice bulky boy very nice and healthy boy he has a few litters on the ground already i'll be showing you guys a sample of that as well yep so that's your boy camo right there he's located in trinidad and uh yeah big boy in this video he's about nine months old there you know so very nice big boy you know uh these guys are you know a pocket you know um with a little standard in there as well as you can see this is his first litter very nice litter nice big ones as well um but yeah bkc you know we're spitting that fire soon hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you like make sure you subscribe guys again big up yourself bkc doesn't care how sore you are, winning doesn't care how much sleep you get, winning doesn't care how hard you work at times. Winning requires all of you and then more, and it promises you nothing. It's a mastermind of creating fear and doubt in your mind. It causes setback after setback. So the question is about winning. Are you willing to sprint when the distance is unknown? And why chase this thing called winning? Because the only thing that's guaranteed in life if you don't chase it is losing. Now is the time to grind. Now is the time to show the world that I was placed here for a purpose. Work for it. Fight for it. It begins today. It continues tomorrow. And it never